Inshallah. Sister Malia, how is Pakistan? Come down. Yeah. Sister Rabia, welcome back. <laughs> now? We can all, all, I mean, the visitor. You? No, no, they are visit from somewhere else. No, because Sister Malia yeah, Pakistan. traveled to Pakistan. Mashallah. And Sister Rabia was visit. taking care of her mother. Oh. So that's. Mashallah. May God bless them. Inshallah. Inshallah, we'll start in one minute. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, إن شاء الله as usual uh, we have obligated upon ourselves to uh, come every Sunday to go through you know, the revelation revealed to humanity. And the only way we can actually help ourselves is when we understand uh, the book also by understanding Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So right now, according to the Sunnah of the Prophet, angels have actually circled this place, asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to forgive us. So we pray that Allah will continue to bless us and Inshallah forgive us. Inshallah. Our class is on Bani Israel, the children of Israel. The children of Israel reminding them of the blessings and the bounties of Allah on them. We have mentioned Allah said, إِذْ جَعَلَ فِيكُمْ أَنْبِيَاءُ وَجَعَلَكُمْ مُلُوكَ وَآتَاكُمْ مَا لَمْ يُؤْتِ أَهْدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ Moses reminding the children of Israel, remember the bounties of Allah upon you. And therefore we have said, yes, it is revealed to the children of Israel, but the statement is generalizable to all of us. Always as Muslims, let's remember the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. And then we continue to read the commandment of Allah on the children of Israel. There are things that they must avoid and there are things that they must. It is an obligation that they must and, uh, uh, actually implement on themselves. Now, when we look at those things that they must avoid, you know, one of them is selling good and receiving bad. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا Meaning, giving justice and accepting that which is not. And also, not only that, but concealing the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they must avoid those things. You know very well that this is right. But you said it is not right. You know that it is not right. But you said it is right. Do not. Allah said do not do that. Now, those are the things they must avoid, meaning always be just. 
justice can never ever be compromised. However, there are ways of conveying justice without breaking the community. But always, that which belongs to Allah, do not compromise. But that which belongs to you, you may compromise. Let's always remember that. That which belongs to Allah, I am not going to compromise. But that which belongs to me, I am willing to compromise. And that's the methodology of the Prophet wasallam. He never said no. Never said no to something that somebody asked him. Sister Rabia will come to the, just write it down. We'll come to the question. He never said no. Claude, he loves it, but one of the companions will say, Prophet, I want that. And the Prophet will say, okay, you have it. Whatever he has, he would share with others. But that which belongs to Allah, no compromise. However, there are ways of actually conveying the message without breaking your community. Yes, sister. I was just looking for more clarification when you say the things that belong to you you can compromise. Yes. Examples of like that which belongs to me, Sister Rabia, you came to my office and said, Imam, I want this book. And I know this book is very expensive. I may compromise. So, okay, Sister Rabia, have it. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I have a car. Somebody said, Imam, that's what I want. Take it. But that which is between you and Allah, for example, justice. Sisters came to you and said, Sister, actually, it was said that you were there when the Imam said A, B, C, D. And then you look at them, oh my God, these are the leadership of the masjid. And, you know, should you please them? Or should you say that which is the truth? That is that which belongs to Allah. That don't. Because it has to do with justice and it has to do with the honor of somebody. Because if you should say, yes, I was there, he said, guess what? They may use that and you and I work with the Department of you know, Corrections. We know very well how Somebody given a witness, false witness, can actually cause one to be incarcerated sometimes for life. However, maybe he actually did not commit the act. That is that which, which belongs to Allah. Justice never ever compromise. That which belongs to me, I may compromise to say, you know what, you have. So that is actually a statement. Now, when we look at also the way we deal with one another, because Quran is not only to be read ritualistically. When you read Quran and understand Quran and try as much as possible to implement it, Wallahi, you, your honor is saved. Your honor. Because always remember there are those in any, every community that you go to, there are those that, are, you know, they don't care what you do. But they always, always create problems. Any community that you go. Now, how can you protect the self? By doing that which is right. Now, when you do that which is right, yes, you are a human and you would make mistakes, but always consistently make sure that you are doing that which is right. Then when those toxins try to actually assassinate your character, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there surely to protect you. So aqimu salah Allah, the first three things Allah said, don't do it. Now Allah is actually commanding them to do it. These are things that you must do. Pray. Give alms to those who deserve. 
وَرْقَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاقِئِينَ and also bow down among those who bow meaning pray in congregation always always there are those people who will say that you know what I'm not going to the masjid because the masjid is all the time full of you know toxins they talk they backbite and all that the problem is you the problem is you who says I am not going to the masjid guess what always remember this that he who actually comes out and then share with people and also be patient is better than he who always isolates himself or herself. Isolationism is not part of us. No. You know, as people, we are gregarious in nature. We are supposed to live in community. When you isolate yourself, when you live all the time by yourself, only me, now guess what? When you die, what happens? Surely, it is not only your family that will bury you, but the community. Therefore, it is our duty to always pray in congregation. There are a lot of challenges when you come to our congregation. I mean the Muslim community anywhere you go. But do not isolate yourself. Always be part of the community. Now, today's class, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابَ Today we have only one ayah because of its importance in our lives. That when you abide by this ayah, this verse, you are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are saved when, you, when it comes to your relationship with people. So, Do you command people? Do you encourage people to do that which is good? Whereas you forget about the self. And you always read the book. Don't you think? Now again, it is an ayah that is meant to the children of Israel. But this ayah indeed is generalizable. So let's look at it again. Ata'muruna nasa. Do you command people? Bilbirri and albir is that when we say bir it is a word that actually encompasses defines everything good everything righteous so Allah is telling us are you always calling people to do that which is right, whereas you forget about the soul, and always you read the book, don't you think? Don't you think? Which means, when you convey the message of righteousness to people, and you do that which is contrary to that message as if one is stupid <laughs> that's it because Allah said why do you encourage people to do good and you forget about the self and you read the book Allah has given you the intellect 
why don't you think? Their form of humul mukhalafa, which is the opposite, is this. When you become somebody who preaches, he loves to preach. He loves to convey the message of righteousness. But he doesn't practice. Well, this, indeed, is not only a hypocritical stunt, but indeed, it's just like somebody who is stupid. He doesn't use his reasoning. He doesn't use that which Allah has given him. So today, we will actually look at this ayah because of its importance in our family life, because of its importance in our spiritual life, because of its importance in intellectual life, our importance in our community, and anywhere you go, this principle will guide you. And this principle will bring the hearts of people closer to you. Yes, you may not be able to please everybody. Actually, yours is not to please them. But to please who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, where whatever stand that you have taken, there are those that would criticize you, Mr. President. There are those that would say whatever you want to say. You can please everybody. But sticking to the principle, the principle of justice. Because if it is good, why don't I start with me? And when I write my khutbah, when I write my lectures, now the first thing is, I'm looking at it, Allah help me. Not help me to convey the message, but Allah help me to be the first person to apply it. Because application is more powerful than words. When you apply, it affects everybody. When you speak, yes, people would listen. Whoa, mashallah, what a powerful statement. But it will not leave with them. It leaves. So the most important message is being an exemplary person. Being an example, being a role model, leading by example. Now, when we look at this, <laughs> there was a time I was on a radio giving an interview, and usually sometimes I would uh, be interviewed uh, back home in Ghana or in New York City. And the topic was a righteous husband. <laughs> and uh, I started to speak. The Prophet وسلم, Aisha said, if he is not at the masjid, he is at home taking care of the family. So I was explaining how, as a person, I will do my best sometimes to even wash uh, in our uh, plates at home when we eat. I have a lot of daughters. And I was explaining, and then my wife overheard that statement. <laughs> and then she came and stood behind me, and she said, tell them the truth. But they actually did not hear my wife saying, and I said, well, the truth, you know, my wife is standing here. She said, I should say the truth. The truth is, most cases, <laughs> I would wash my plate. I have withdrawn all the time. I would wash the plate. 
But it is so interesting that when my wife came there, she said, well, yeah, yeah, you do wash the plates, but not all the time. But how can it be effective? Now, when she said that, wallahi, the message was so powerful than one could ever imagine that even my wife was standing there to say, yeah, not all the time. He, you know, most of the time would wash. Meaning leading by example. The message that one may convey would worse alone, believe me, leading by example would convey times a hundred. So brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah is speaking to the children of Israel. Allah said, Do you always encourage people to do that which is good? Whereas you forget about the self, and Allah has given you the reasoning to read the book, don't you think? And therefore, when we leave with our families at home, beginning with our wives and our husbands, we have to be examples. Because eventually children are going to come. Now when the children arrive, what the father and the mother does is what the children will do. Do not expect your children to do that the opposite that which you and your wife do. Because it is not the school. The only influence is school or the neighborhood. No. In most cases, our children are at home with us. How can we help them? And they, the initial stage of childhood, they are innocent. They are innocent completely. It is the husband and the wife that will make them what they would become in the future. And the future is so close. So do not expect, and that's why Arabs would say that what the child becomes tomorrow is exactly what the father was yesterday. Or what the child is doing today is what he's been nurtured to do. However, not all the time. Because we have great, great prophets whose children, you know, <coughs> strays. So don't say, well, Imam, what about my son? I have given him everything. Don't sit down and say, well, Imam, what about my daughter? I have given her everything. All the discipline that she needs, she got it. But look at what she's doing. Are you blaming me, Imam? No, I'm not. Blame is not ours. But majority, most of the time, with the children, because if he is home all the time and he would sleep till nine o'clock at the age of five, at the age of six, at the age of seven, and nobody says, no, he wakes up and then he prays whether he prays or not, guess what? He's going to grow up and become. Salah is not important to him. And our focus should not be, I want him or her to succeed in this life. To succeed in this life. No, our focus should be to succeed in this life and also to succeed in the hereafter. Now when you give the moral values which we call in the hereafter, it will help them in the dunya. To actually live a humble life 
and to treat you with respect. However, again, our children, Allah said, Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. <laughs> Allah said, Your wealth and your children are but fitna. What is the meaning? They are trial. I have given him everything that he needs. But look at what he's doing. I have given her everything that she needs. Look at what she's doing. Aha, it's a trial. He is a trial. Allah is trying you. <clears throat> now when you think that, look, I am the only person going through this problem. Oh, my son. La hawla wa la I'm the only. You don't want to know what I know. <laughs> you don't? It is a universal problem. It is an automatic problem. We are all going through this problem. All of us. You may know, you may not know. We are all going through this struggle with kids, with our children. How can they become a you know, competent leader? Every we are. Wallahi, I will tell you what I know about my community, 90% is going through this problem. So you are not alone. Now what shall I do? Break him or her? Well, you are cursed. You are destroyed. Get out of my house. No, 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 no. Don't go there. Don't help shaitan over your children. Don't do it. Yes, you have to be tough, but also what? You have to use the tool of mercy. Use the tool of mercy. Look, look at us yesterday <laughs> when we were growing up. Well, if you actually live a life of angels, I did not. Your imam. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, <laughs> you don't want to know the mistakes that I made in 70s when I was growing up. You know, during uh, you know music, reggae music, and all that in Ghana, in my community. Oh my God! And the cigarette and all that. <sighs> Not easy. Now, and I told you my story, and the youth were here. They were laughing. My friends taught me how to deceive my mother. My mother was a very tough lady. She would make sure every night she would check whether her son is in his bedroom. My friends taught me, look at uh, uh, you know, peer pressure. My friends taught me, get some pillows. We would help you buy them. You know, they helped me bought three pillows. And then at night, I would put those pillows on my bed. And I would cover it nicely. As if uh, Abdurrahman is sleeping. My mother comes in and look. Yes, he's sleeping. She goes. Until an old lady actually saw me doing what I am not supposed to do. She came home and reported it to my mother. My mother said, no. Abdurrahman was sleeping at that time. She said, I swear by God, I saw him. My mother said, okay. So the next time she went to my room and checked the, you know, making sure her son, oh my God, it was nothing but pillow. <laughs> so she, she removed the pillow and then she lied on my bed, you know, waiting for me. You know, hide, you know, she hid the pillows. Wait. At two o'clock I came home. Alhamdulillah. Ah. And it's time to remove the pillows <laughs> and to get some rest. And I'm trying to touch the pillow. No, this is what? What is this? Oh my God! My mom choked me, <laughs> and I believe me was disciplined in such a way that I will never. I still have the marks, you know, uh, of discipline. This is me. This is this one of mine. Try this. Said, look, you just try cigarette. You know, just try. No, my mother is tough. Just try only once. Oh, just try, try. Ah, went home. My mother looked at me and said, oh, 
why your eyes are red? What is happening? Come closer, come. And I came, she said, What's, what is happening, Abdul Rahman? Tell me the truth, you know? When you tell me the truth, you are saved. I said, yeah, ma'am, I smoke cigarette. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You smoke cigarette, okay? <laughs> tomorrow, you know, if I did not take care of you right now, tomorrow you're going to smoke weed. Oh, my God. Again, punishment. This is us. None of us is perfect. We are not angels. However, mistakes that we have made, we don't want our children to repeat the same mistakes. And their challenges is completely different. The internet, the googling, and the you know, texting, and all these things that the children go through. How can we protect them? That should be the goal. We have made mistakes in the past. But should we allow our children to repeat the same mistakes? No. We must use the tools that we have today in order to help guide them. Now, one of the professors once said, Dr. Snyder, he said, if you have tools, you can endure all kinds of problems. With tools, you can face all challenges, all problems in the USA. Without tools, you are vulnerable. If you don't have tools, surely you are vulnerable. And therefore, ours is, how can I, as a Muslim, how can I give my children the tools to survive in our world that is full of confusion? That should be the focus of every part. And guess what? And I did mention this some time ago. In Africa, there is a saying in Africa that a proverb that says, a mother that would hate to see her child cry in their younger age, she would cry in their older age. What it means here, <coughs> how many times when somebody is trying to help discipline our kids who don't like it? No, don't do it. From today, leave my child alone. Because the child, because you see, they've created their own way. <laughs> Crying, fake. Now they just want their parents to react. Now the father overreacts and the mother overreacts. And guess what? We keep breaking the community. Oh, I'm not going to say anything. The father or the mother will jump on me. Now guess what? We are actually helping destroy that child. That child would grow up with no discipline, with no values, because exactly that is what the parents do. And therefore, ours in a community setting is how can we collectively help. I will never wait to see somebody's child cry here at ICCD. Never. Because then I'm being hypocritical. When I see your child doing anything that is not right, I will discipline them exactly how I will discipline my child. Because so that tomorrow the child will say, aha, he's coming. I'm not going to do it. That's good. Why do we have cameras? <laughs> Sometimes cameras are there in order to protect us all. So brothers and sisters in Islam, yes, the ayah is meant to the children of Israel. Why do you say that which you do not do? It is indeed, indeed, wrong way, wrong teaching method to actually say that which you do not do. So let's look quickly here. Leading by example. Now, tools of da'wah. You know, da'wah has tools by which we convey the message. 
At-tabligu bil-qawl. At-tabligu, to convey the message of Allah bil-qawl, with words, with statements. <coughs> given khutbah, given lectures, that is At-tabligu bil-qawl. To say it, words coming out of your mouth. Now, At-tabligu bil-amal, there are also, you know, another methodology by which it is conveyed through what? Amal, work, action, deeds. She will never wait to be told what to do. Hum, she jumps. She would go there and do it. She doesn't, she's a person of few words, but more action. Do I know that person or those people in my community? Yeah, we know those who will not wait. They will jump and do it. Now when you're asking them to do it, you don't feel like, aha, uh -huh, I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure whether, no. They are people by action, al amal. Now, Bisirat al hasana at tabligi Bisirat al hasana now they will not say anything because of people know them. Their values, their history is full of righteousness. So this, to say, to act, and then to let it be part of you, that is the best. If you have a person who has all the three qualities, has a legacy. A person without, especially the two, no legacy. Because when you keep saying, 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 eventually, how many books are written every day in America? <laughs> every day. Books that are out, not tens, in hundreds. But a lot of them would what? Disappear. There are few that will remain. Those that will remain is what? Action oriented. <coughs> Imam Malik once was asked, you write in water. And we already have a mortar. We have a couple of mortars. He said, that which is written sincerely shall remain. But that which is written for fame to be known shall eventually perish. So this. Now, al-ilmu bila amal hujjatun ala sahibi. Al-ilmu, if you have knowledge, Bila amal, without implementation. Hujjatun ala sahibi, it is what? It is indeed a witness. It is indeed an evidence against he or she who has the knowledge. If you have knowledge, it's only by proving you have bachelor's degree, you have master's degree, you have PhD in Islamic law. That is nonsense. Without action, it doesn't make any sense. So, al-ilm bila amal hujjatun ala sahibi. If you have knowledge, without doing your best to convey that knowledge, it doesn't work. What shall I do then? I have knowledge. But I am very weak in this field or in this part. Should I be quiet? No. <laughs> no. Just because I am not doing that act doesn't mean it should be quiet. I should always do my best, connecting my words with helping me to change. But are you doing harm when you say something that you do not do? Yeah. <laughs> because guess what? If I happen to be, and I am the Imam, and when it comes to you know saying, I just say without you know actually paying attention to sensitivities of people, you know cursing and all kinds of things. Guess what? We are helping to create in our community the same as the imam. The same because people will look at the imam and say, well, the imam does and go free. Guess what? I have to do it too. The president does and go unpunished. I have to do it too. 
And that is why it is very important to always make sure that we would, you know, whatever we have been blessed to have, we should come. And also, if you are not willing, it is said, you know, part of even the leadership uh, trainings in America, which is secular, that if you are not willing to convey the responsibility given to you, do not take it. If you know that you are not going to do the work, don't take that position as being a leader. You know, if your imamship is just to, you know, just come here and, you know, sit down with doing nothing, it's better not to actually take it. But should I be quiet because I am unable to convey the message? No. No. Do your best. Always keep reminding yourself that, well, uh, you know, short comments here and there, short falls here and there, but how can I connect the words and my action? Now, another ayah, we said this ayah is whom? Is actually meant convey to the children of Israel which is actually Jews. Okay? Now, let's look here. Do we have an ayah that is meant for us specifically? We've said this ayah is indeed revealed to the children of Israel. Why do you say, or why do you encourage people to do good? Why you don't do it? Don't you think? This ayah is specifically to the children of Israel, Israel. But we've said that it is generalizable. But do we, as the Ummah, have an ayah that is speaking also to us more specifically? Yes. Allah said in Surah Al-Saf, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon kabura maqtan inda Allah this is Surah Surah 61, Ayah 2 to 3. Oh, you who believe. Now you know that this ayah is talking to you and I. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Oh, you who believe. Lima. Taquluna ma la taf'aloon. Why? Why? Lima, why is strange? Why do you say that which you do not do? Lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon. Why do you say ma la taf'aloon? That which you do not do. It is kabura maqutan inda Allah. It is indeed serious. Grave sin. In the sight of Allah, for you to say, that which you do not do. It is indeed a grave sin. In the sight of Allah, for you to say that which you do not do. Because of its ramifications. Just look. Just look at the Father. A father who smokes, and then the son is smoking. I remember this very well. <laughs> my mom, one day, said, I'm going to watch this man eat. You know, I told you she's a tall lady. Because we usually will eat, and uh, my my father, my brother, my uncle, it, it's a family. So we we'll sit down <coughs> in a big pot, and everybody is putting their hands inside. And oh, dare not touch meat. <laughs> Brother Abdulhak, never ever try to touch meat when you are eating with elders. They're watching you carefully. So we we'll eat. And then we we'll finish eating, and then my father lit a cigarette, started to smoke, and my older brother 
Sigrid started to smoke. And Sigrid is taboo. In, 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 in Islamic society. But, but those days, you know. And my mother said, oh, like father, like son. Like father, like son. I'm trying to you know, advise this kid to stop smoking. But look at the father. He is not helping me at all. Look at the, my father, my mother started to give a lecture. <laughs> Why is, we were sitting there and, and I was about to, to, to leave and my mother said, sit there and I'm talking to your father and all of you, the so-called men, hear what I'm telling you. That was the last, that was the end <coughs> that I saw my father saying, quit to smoking and it helped everybody in the family to what? To quit. Because when you convey a message and you do contrary to that message, it doesn't work. It doesn't. You have to be the person to first and foremost implement it. It's not easy though. <laughs> I mean, when you, you know, when it comes to individuals or nations, it's just not, you know, it's like the saying goes, it's much easier to fight for your principles than yes. to live by them. Yes. Right? I mean, it's, but, oh, you, Mr. It's, President, I agree. <laughs> Never an easy thing. But Islam is telling us that that's the most powerful tool you have. Very powerful. If you want a very powerful tool, lead by example. Yes, we have principles. And sometimes we would be derailed you know, by shaitan or by the desire to do the opposite. But let's always remind ourselves. Come back. Come back quickly. Be especially when you begin to convey the message to your kid or to you know, other youth to tell them, that, look, I was... Okay, I was not created angel. And I have gone through some of the challenges that you're going through. But always remember, don't break yourself. Because when you continue to do that which is evil, evil, and your life is completely defined as evil, guess what? You are gone. You are destroyed. <laughs> you don't want to get there. So when we convey the message to our children, let's not let them feel that we, dad and mom, are angelic figures. <laughs> they never made mistakes. It doesn't help. It doesn't. Sit down with them and let them know that <coughs> son, daughter, you see, I was like you. And I've gone through a lot. Allah protected me and I had people who would talk to me, who would actually guide me. And that's why I am here today. I, you don't want to know son, you don't want to know daughter. Some of my friends, they've been destroyed. And I don't want you to be destroyed. I will do whatever I can to help you daughter, as long as you are willing to change. I'm not trying to push you out, but I'm trying my utmost best to help protect you. Protection is in the hands of Allah, but I will do my best. But the way you're doing, what you're doing, and the way you're going, what you're doing, is not helping. And I hate to tell you this, if you did not change, your future. Only Allah knows your future. There's no hope. But I'm not saying that I'm cursing. I'm not cursing you, but I'm telling you based on experience. Based on experience, you are not leading a good life. You need to change quickly. Help them. When they make those mistakes and leave, and they come back home, don't help shaitan with them.
by driving the baby. Always your door, your windows should be open for them to be received. You don't know. None of us can tell what comes tomorrow. If we know what comes tomorrow, that's, that may be different. But Allah did not create us. We only can tell somehow based on experience. But realistically, what will happen tomorrow? لا يعلمه إلا الله لا يعلمه None can tell. Now, there was this story in Washington. Washington, D.C. There was this young man who actually was leading life. Oh my God, parents are very, very righteous people. And uh, he, you know, stopped coming to the masjid, doesn't pray. And the parents are really, the mother cries all the time. Imam, please pray. Imam, please pray. And I said, Inshallah, let's do our best. He left. Before we hear, he went to a church and got married. And he came one day with a big uh, cross. He came to the masjid and uh, he said, Imam, how are you? And I said, Assalamu alaikum. He said, alaikum assalam. <laughs> what happened? He said, well, Imam, I've decided to, you know, my my parents are leading a life that is not, you know, and Islam is not helping me. Oh my God. Islam is not helping me, he said. So what happened? What happened was, he left. After a year, <laughs> he came back in Jalbab. <laughs> When he came, I could even not recognize him. He came with his mother. And I said, Salaam alaikum, alaikum salam. Who is this? He said, Imam, what are you talking about? That's your son. I said, welcome, what happened? He said, Imam, Allah guided me. Allah guided me. I was one day, and I went to, we went to a church. You know, because a friend of mine is actually married, we went to this church, and then the pastor who was actually giving the sermon was saying exactly, exactly Islam. And my wife looked at me, and I looked at my wife. Yes, my wife, actually, because I love this woman so much, when we went home, there was quiet in the house, silence. And my wife asked me uh, the message today. What do you think? I said, Yeah, I like the message today. I said, but the message looks like your your own religion. <laughs> I said, exactly, it is. She said, Well, can we go to a masjid here on Friday to hear what the? And I'm not. I've never experienced Islam, but I want to go to a masjid to hear. And they went, fortunately, it was Siraj Wahaj. <laughs> fortunately, it was Siraj Wahaj that was giving the sermon. After the sermon, she looked at his, her husband and said, look, you left, I'm going in. <laughs> she said, I am going in and until I need to see that imam. So they went. Siraj was very busy, he was about to leave. This woman said, I need to talk to this man. And she said, look, I want to know more about Islam. And Siraj asked him, are you convinced that this is... She said, I swear by God, I'm convinced. Siraj said, Shea ashadu Allah ila... <laughs> At a parking lot. Say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. She said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Siraj Wahad said, from today you are a Muslim. Go to this masjid and learn about Islam. 
the husband was standing there saying, what shall I do? Go back to my mother or go back to my religion or say what? <laughs> and look at how. So Allah bless them. They came back not the way they used to be. No, they came back sincere Muslims. So none of us can tell that which comes tomorrow. No. Your children continue to give them discipline and always pray for them. But yes, we have said that discipline begins at home. And discipline begins early in their lives. Early. Because that which is being learned when one is very young would stay for them for good. They would never forget it. But let's not use that discipline to be a way of actually causing them to stay away from Islam. Some of us, the way the masjid conveys the message, makes those children hate the masjid. And I, even in my own community here, I learned previously, some, when I speak to some of the, you know, those that are in their churches now, those that are born in this masjid, some of them, because, you know, the methodology of the past was not helping them. So they would rule. So brothers and sisters in Islam, lima taqooluna ma la taf'alun. Why do you do that which you do not do? It is a grievous sin in the sight of Allah, in the law, and taqulu for you to say, ma la taf'alun, that which you do not do. Now, if we understand that, Always, always, let's convey the message of Islam through our actions. That is very, very important. Now, when it comes to methodology of da'wah, there is also something known as at-ta'ir and nasiha. Okay? This word, at-ta'ir, I think we spoke about it before, at-ta'ir. And then al-nasiha, al-nasiha, all may be known as advice. How do we advise people? Just because you are the imam does not mean you should come and say, uh, Salman. Uh, your fatiha is not right. Uh, you should say, the, no, 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 that is a ta'ir, exposing them. When they reach certain age, we advise them as if they are what? They are friends. We don't, we don't go hard on them. Now, you probably may use a methodology a little bit strict here when they are young, growing up. They reach a certain age, you begin to lose them and treat them as friends. Now, when you come to the community, when you come to the masjid, always be careful. Always be careful trying to advise people publicly. I'm trying to, hey, you, you, until you know you take certain measures, certain, you tried A, it didn't work. You tried two, it didn't work. You tried three, therefore you stay away. Now when the person is pushing, and now when you become an imam, sometimes it is better to address this issue publicly. Now let me share with you this. During Ramadan, and always people would come to me advising me there was a brother who actually he left the community he said imam um fatia uh, you know quran you know is fine but uh, this brother his fatia is not probably it's not good and i said his fatia he one of the brothers that is well his field is quran okay and this brother came to me that I should advise the brother that his fatiha, the way he's reciting here, is not good. And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> he said, well, Imam, I think so. 
And I said, well, humbly, um, just uh, I'm the imam here, and I'm telling you it's not, you know, what you're saying is not. <coughs> no, he said, brother, you either advise him. Look at the attitude. You either advise him or I will advise him. <laughs> and I said to him, don't. If you do it, <coughs> if you go and claim that you want to advise him, and he come back, he comes back to me, it's not going to be good for you. He said, well, Islam and Nasiha. Islam is an advice. And guess what he did? The brother was standing with somebody, and then he came and said, brother, I need to advise you. Islam is advice. Your recitation of Fatiha, he, he, he did it. Uh, it's not, it's, it's not uh, the way it should be. So uh, I advise you. And the brother was very, very angry. So the brother came to me and said, Imam, you better do something about this. So I called the brother in my office and the attitude. And I asked him, what are your credentials, <laughs> pejuidically? Well, I learned from the shiuch. Well, let me tell you, I learned from the shiuch and I have masters in Islamic law. I need to know, I'm not going to any doctor. I have my doctors here. I'm not going to any doctor. And usually, Dr. Mirza, we will be having program here. And then he will rush and go to the hospital and come back. Dr. Mirza, where were you? He said, I went and did some operation. <laughs> now, whoa, did some operation and came back. I said, MashaAllah. Would you, in this day and age, allow anybody to become your doctor without credentials? No, he said, no. Well, but in Islam, no, that is part of the problem. Today, when you look at the problem we Muslims are going through in the world, is people speaking or representing Islam and have no credentials. They claim, this man taught me, this man taught me. So I told the brother, never ever do that again. He said, I will. <laughs> and I should be surprised what comes next. Again, somebody came to me you know, and during Ramadan and said, Imam, let me advise you, you are doing this dua. That is not, in, that, this, this is the attitude. In Arabic, we don't say it that way. In Arabic. What? He said, in Arabic, we don't say it that way. I said, okay, you and I should go back and uh, you know, visit books. Don't rush quickly. You and I should go back. Well, I went and did my research and I showed it to him. No. Show me, prove to me something written. No. In my country, we don't say that. That's our community here. And then somebody came to me and asked me, well, Imam, the same question. And another person came to me and asked me the same question. It's spreading. I have to address it on the member. I have to. Whenever you see me addressing an issue on the member, it's because I have tried on one on one basis, it didn't work, or it is not going to work. So I have to protect my community. And Sister Samia asked me, Is it working for you? I said, Well, lie, 100 percent is working. <coughs> it's working. It's working very well. People, everybody will understand their limitations. You don't come to me and sit down and say, you've never been to my class. Okay? <laughs> you never been to my class. You are not Brother, uh, uh, brother uh, Hamid. Who started with us until you never come. You only came one time. So you sat and watched everybody. And then you saw Dr. Tipu. <laughs> oh my God. I will never forget it. You know, I gave hope about that. And then you came to my office and said, Imam, I, I, you know, those doctors, you know, I've seen one of your doctors sitting there, you know, don't trust them. What? And you expect me to keep it? No, I don't do things like that. That is my principle, my methodology. You don't come to me with that. I never saw you here. You just came one time. 
and therefore you want to destroy somebody, I would speak about it so that you don't come back again. Because it is not only you. We have people like that. And therefore there is Nasiha advice. I am advising and there is a ta'ir exposing people. Don't do it. Don't go with the second one. A ta'ir exposing people. Until you know that there is benefit to it, don't always go with what? One on one. Call the person and advise them sincerely. But don't expose them, please. Because when you do that, the message is not going to, they will never listen to you. Although they may be making mistakes in their recitation, but if you should talk to them on personal level, they would be willing to listen to you. But when you publicly publicize it, that, look, your recitation is not good, ABC, especially mentioning names, don't do it negatively. <laughs> when it comes to names negatively, don't do it, but positively do it. <laughs> positively do it. Oh, my community here, oh, Imam, don't do it, please, don't mention my name. I respect that very well. It is an order or an, uh, you know, an advice or sort of uh, if it is an order, well, I'll stay away from it. But if you are asking me just that, I don't sit home to look and say, whose name should I mention today? It, it just comes out. The prophet did it. Mention Abu Bakr, mention Umar, Abdurrahman bin Auf, mention all of them and said to Usman, from today onwards, do whatever you like. No more. You are saved. Yeah. So let's always remember this. The most powerful message is action-oriented. That's the most powerful message. Action-oriented and not based on words, sayings, how powerful this message is. No, 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 no. It's how he's been able to implement the message. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasafoon. وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Any question before our tea break? Yes. You said that uh, don't don't don't, uh, don't do ta'ir. A ta'ir, yes. Except when there's like unless you share it's beneficial. Do you have any examples? <sighs> okay. A ta'ir. As the word says, is exposing somebody publicly. When you have somebody in the community, and that person is going around actually backbiting and character assassination, and you try on individual level, it didn't work, and you know that it's spreading, spreading, affecting your community then you would use the tool, not a ta'ir, a ta'ir is exposed, you would use the tool of actually the language that they understand, publicize it. And I gave you an example that here in my community, not once, I faced this more than 10 times in my community here, um, where people would come, either they are attacking somebody or they want to show that they know better. You know, we have... This community, you know, we have a lot of, not only this community, every Muslim community, you have people like that going around and, you know, saying things. When that happens, you have to sometimes, as a leader, not everybody, as a leader, you have to say, this is wrong and we have to stop. But do whatever you can not to mention the name of people, the names. Avoid mentioning names when it comes to a ta'ir exposing uh, you know, those wicked and toxic people of the community, avoid names, okay? But make sure you attack what? The action. That's the most important. Attack the action and do not attack the person. Because the person may come back and say, you know what, I apologize, Mr. President. And so, would you say no? Say no. Alhamdulillah, let's move on. For example, um, Friday, on the day of Jummah, and I actually called my president. He didn't return my call. <laughs> I, you know, I was in the facility when my wife called me and said, well, <laughs> you better do something right now. And I was ready to go and leave Juma. And I asked, what happened? 
She said, the Khatib, the brother who is supposed to give khutbah, he is not at the masjid. And they called him, he said he may be late, around 15 minutes to 1. Ha, inna lillah. So I started asking, is this person in the masjid? I call Ayman. Ayman picked. Is this person at the masjid? Is this person? Is this person? And Ayman is saying, no, no. But now, actually, uh, Dr. Minhas is calling the brother. I was confused. And then I called. And then they told me that, well, uh, Brother Abdul Malik, you know, is already on the member. And I said, okay. Now, I begin to think, what should I do? I already promised my community that the last mistake will not happen again. It happened again. What shall I do? Now, the brother uh, who was supposed to come and give khutbah called me yesterday night and said, Imam, I'm actually sorry. Um, I thought, you know, the prayer is at 1 o'clock. Uh, and therefore, please, I apologize. Such a mistake will never happen again. And I said, okay, you know, no problem. I really appreciate you calling. But inshallah, we'll do whatever we can not to happen again. But I'm the imam of the community. So, well, I don't, and I know my president would be called, well, president, your, your imam did it again. So I called the president and I didn't get it. But guess what I'm going to say this Friday? Actually, this Friday, I was supposed to be in New York City, Siraj Wahaj's Masjid. But I said, no, I called them and said, I cannot come because my community needs me. Yes, because I have to actually convey to my community that I promise that it's not going to happen. It happened again. Is this a ta'ir? No. The brother, and I have to explain why. What happened? The brother thought it's one o'clock. And based on that, me and the president are talking perhaps. Uh, maybe Salah, we have to, I'll leave that until I talk with my president. <laughs> Or, uh, you know, perhaps we'll have one fix throughout the year. Done. So nobody would say, Imam, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it's one o'clock, and that is why I'm late. We leave it at one o'clock, Mr. President, I'm sorry to discuss this publicly before talking to you. Leave it one o'clock, and then case closed. And perhaps train some of you, the young, who are able, inshallah, to in case an imam is coming, an accident happened, uh, who should actually be prepared in order to leave, inshallah. So yes, there may be time, but your parents never, ever use a ta'ir. Okay? However, there was a time my mom said to me, my father is the most beautiful man on earth. And I said, mom, thank you. She gave me all the list of good deeds about my father. Then, uh, when my father took a second wife, my mom came to me and said, your father is the worst man on earth. <laughs> and uh, I said, mom, mom, last two, three years, you said my father, is the most beautiful man on earth. Uh -huh. And today you said he is the ugliest or the worst. What happened, mom? He said, oh man, he changed. Your father has changed. And I said, mom, please, let's sit down and talk. I know we are all bleeding. My father took a second wife, but let's sit down and talk. And then come to some sort of, she said, no, we are not going to talk. I have come to my conclusion. And I said to my mom, mom, it's not, that's not right. So I came and my father and my mom were sitting down talking. And I said, you want a story? They said, yes. I said, mom, you once said my father is the most <coughs> beautiful man. And my father was sitting down laughing and she was laughing. And I said, but unfortunately, mom, when you took a second wife, mom, this is what mom said. So that we all started laughing. But it seems to be like a ta'ir. I'm trying to expose what my mother said, but in a very respectful manner. When it comes to your parents, do whatever you can. Never, ever expose the weaknesses of your parents. When you do that, your weaknesses would be exposed before you die. Yes, any other question before we... Mr. President, I saw you doing this. <laughs> Any questions, sisters? 
Oh, I miss Sister Huda. <laughs> she would have had, yes, I have questions. Brother Hamid, how are you? May Allah continue to give you strength, inshallah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We have tea time. We